18th episode now of Linking Up with Loveworks, where it's at Loveworks, we believe that you are never too young to be a dreamer and you are never too old, Carolyn, to get started on that dream. That makes me feel good. Not too young, not too old. Well, our hope with Link is that each week our special guest is going to connect with you wherever you find yourself today. They're actually going to help you and inspire you to become the best version of yourself for tomorrow. Absolutely. And let us know, too, if there is a future guest that you would like for us to interview on Link. And speaking of Link, we live stream on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. And also, too, we want to make you aware of a special live stream on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock where we have a special segment that is called Spreading Hope from Around the World. And we definitely need at this particular time as much hope and encouragement as we possibly can get during these hard and difficult times. And we also, too, on this Memorial Day, we like to take a moment to honor those who have served our nation and are no longer with us, as well as those who have lost their lives due to COVID-19. And it's also roll call time. And so if you guys will let us know in the comments your name, where you live, what grade you're in. And parents, if you're out there too, let us know who you are because you're important too. And today we have a fun special question of the day. It's in recognition of our guest. And the question is, do you have a hidden talent? If so, what is it? Michael, do you have a hidden talent? I do have a hidden talent that you have not yet seen, and it involves an appropriate, child age appropriate, card trick. And it was a card trick that my dad showed me when I was a kid, and it's called Little Joe, which uses the full deck of cards, and it tells a story. Ooh, that sounds totally right up your alley. A game and a story? I love it. Absolutely. Two in one. And how about you, Karen? What's your hidden talent? So I can, if anyone can find one of these relics um, called a phone book, I can actually rip one of those in half. I haven't done it in a while, but it used to be one of, one of my old hidden tricks. You know, I'm using one of those uh, phone books right now. Uh, I'm sitting on it. It's helping me to prop up and during, this, oh. uh, during this interview. <laughs> That's funny. That well, funny. okay. Okay, dreamers and doers, here is the format for today's interview. You're going to get a chance to hear from a special guest where they're going to share not only their dream, but some challenges that they've encountered along the way. And you're also going to be able to hear about, and my favorite part is the steps that they've taken to reach their dream. To warm you up for today's interview, we have a question and a chance for you to win a prize. And so first person that gives us the correct answer, you guys will get a prize mailed directly to your house. And the question is, how old was our guest when she co-founded Beads of Good? So how old was our guest when she co-founded Beads of Good with her sister? Carolyn, I feel excited because I think it's one of the first trivia questions that I think I know the answer to. <laughs> but, but I'm going to stay quiet and allow others to uh, to guess. So I know you're excited. I'm excited. Let's get started and meet our dreamer and doer. Her name is none other than Elizabeth Grantham. Elizabeth is an 18-year-old student in Oklahoma City, and she's the co-founder of Beads of Good, She, which is a nonprofit organization that is mobilizing girls to create social change in their communities. And Elizabeth is an advocate for under-resourced young women in Africa. Uh, she's passionate about seeing students create innovative ways to solve problems. She and her co-founder sister, Allison, have also published a children's book, and it's called The Girl Chronicles. Uh, and this book was written to inspire and equip young girls to use their ordinary strengths to change their communities. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm very excited. <laughs> Elizabeth, it is so great to hear your voice, and we are thrilled to have not only a fellow dreamer and doer with us today, but a friend of Love Works. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So you and your sister started a nonprofit. Uh, you're 18 now. And so when did you and your sister, what ages were you both when you started this nonprofit? I was eight and my sister was five. So a long okay. time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty remarkable. Five-year-olds and eight-year-olds definitely don't do that every day. And so can you ask you, like, how did this all start? That was a long story, long process that's still, still unfolding. But we... We're eight and five and we passed a homeless woman and this was the first time we realized that people didn't have basic needs um, and probably the first time we felt compassion and we um, felt what it was like to care for somebody that didn't have um, 
what we had. And so that shocked us. Um, and through, through a series of events, we decided that we, we could do something about it. And so we came up with an idea to take bead kits and um, to make beads and bracelets and sell them and give the money to local charities that were helping um, the homeless in our city. And so that's where the whole idea of, um, you know, wanting to help other people started. Um, and then after that, we started sponsoring two girls in, Kent, er, in Zimbabwe um, and their names are Grace and Precious. And so we started emailing each other and talking on the phone um, and we, we developed a relationship and called each other sisters. Um, and then Grace told me she had HIV AIDS, which is a sickness that affects a lot of people all over the world. Um, and specifically for her, um, could have ended her life and actually um, killed her mom. Her mom passed away from AIDS. That's why she's an orphan. Um, and so Grace had to, to live with this. And that was really bothersome. And so I knew that that we needed to do something, that the same compassion we felt for the homeless woman, I now felt for my sister. And so we thought that we could take our bead idea and, and use that to provide a solution. And so we now have a school and a safe house in Kenya, and we house and educate girls who are victims of violence um, and abuse and some who have never been to school and um, don't have safe places to live. And so we're giving them the opportunity to, um, to change their own lives so they can go into their communities um, and, and change them for the better. And so that's, that's where the idea started and how we began. Um, and it, it started with the idea of, you know, how can we help? Um, and here's a gift um, and a strength that we feel like we have, which is bead making. And so we use that to provide the solution. So it's been a long process, but. <laughs> Elizabeth, it is so inspiring just to hear, to hear your story. Thank you for the work that you are doing for these girls. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm still I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this idea of you being an eight year old girl starting this, and and I love what you even shared earlier, just a little bit about your why, and even the first time that you felt uh, compassion. But again, this idea of being like eight years old, you know, I have a few young kiddos myself. Uh, I'm thinking about my five year old uh, who has training wheels still on her bike. My seven year old is still working on tying her shoelaces. Yet you're starting a nonprofit. So I'm curious, you know, what kind of help did you have along the way? And what kind of role did your family have in all this? Yeah, we had lots of help. Um, otherwise, you know, a five and eight-year-old can't do much without, you know, support, obviously. Um, we need training wheels too. So um that's that's a good analogy. Family is the training wheels. So good job, Michael. Um we um, my, our parents just saw that desire that we wanted to right the wrongs that we, we saw in the world. Um, and they, they really pushed us in that and they supported us and encouraged us. Um, and the first thing that we did was actually start a blog, um, to kind of track what we were doing and what we wanted to do. Um, and the first thing that we did was deliver care packages of food to, um, kids in our city that during the summer that didn't have food or access to food because school was closed. Um, and so we blogged about that and, and started trying to figure out how to sell jewelry to, to benefit that. Um, and then that kind of shifted to um, us working in Africa and we started, you know, speaking a little bit and all these, they just started, um, you know, pushing into us in ways that we, you know, no, nobody want, you know, it's weird to, to speak. And so, for them to push us in something that they don't even know if we're good at um, has is a lot of faith. And so the first time I spoke was at a church event. Um, and as everybody bowed to pray, I ran out of the room and didn't come back. So that was the first time. Um, and so that doesn't leave a lot of um, faith in, in anybody, but my parents gave me that room to fail and, and then pushed me the second time. And it's not like they booked me for a smaller event you can't go smaller than 30 people at church. So it was a bigger event. Um, and, and it really, you know, I attribute that to a lot of the success we've had because I think I was 12. And so that was, a, you know, it changed the course of what we're doing. Um, and people started believing in us, but because they allowed me room to fail, I felt confidence the next time that I spoke because, you know, the worst case scenario is that you get afraid and run out I and mean, that had already happened. So, um, so it just pushed me to believe in myself in a way I hadn't before. Um, and so because of my parents pushing in us and, and believing in us, we, we were able to do something. And then another example is my grandfather has an, a nonprofit and he does community development in Africa. So he helps build buildings and help people um, and fund projects that are supporting um, community development and um, 
reducing, you know, the effects of poverty. Um, and that's how we learned about Grace and Precious was through him. And so without him, you know, we wouldn't be in Africa. We wouldn't be doing um, probably anything in Africa. And so because of him and the way that he, you know, he presented these problems and ideas to a five and eight year old in a way that inspired us and encouraged us. Um, and because they believed in us, we were able to, to do something about the things that we saw. So it was really important to have, you know, to lean on the people around us and it doesn't have to be parents. It can be friends or family or even people at LoveWorks. Um, you have a great resource and a team of people who want to support you and LoveWorks has supported us a bunch and we wouldn't be where we are without them either. So it's just people who are in your corner um, who want to believe in you. So. Well, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> we also, I mean, I love what you say, like your family just really, um, and, you know, supported you and enabled you to be able to make an impact um, in the way that you have. And so I think that's important uh, for a five and an eight year old to, you know, have compassion um, and also then just to continue rolling with it with the family support is is important. Um, and I love that part of your story. And so you guys have been running Beads of Good for about 10 years now. Could you share with us one of your favorite stories from over the last, over the last years? Yeah, I think my all time favorite is Grace and Precious. We've considered them sisters, um, and have stayed in close contact with them and, and still do today. Um, and they're one's a year older than me and one's a year younger. So they're like right around our ages. Um, and so we, because they live in Zimbabwe, which is really, it's just a corrupt country and it's just not, it's not set up for people who are, you know, have influence, let alone an orphan. Um, and so we want to, to provide for them, um, in the same way that they have, um, changed our lives. And so we want to send them to Kenya to be a part of what we're doing. So they'll get to go to college and be trained by our overseer. Um, and they have hearts to go back into Zimbabwe and, and create change and to impact, you know, the, the faults that, or the things that they've seen that aren't right. Um, and the things that they've seen that aren't right to their friends or to them. And so, um, that's been my favorite story. And I'm excited to see how that plays out, how, because, um, because of their impact in our lives, we want to have an equal impact in theirs. And so I'm hoping that, 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 you know, plays out soon. <laughs> That is so good, Elizabeth. Thanks for sharing that that story. And, and speaking of stories, the story doesn't stop with just beads of good. Uh, it could just stop here, right? Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, a few years ago, you had another dream, and it was to write a book. In fact, that book that you had an idea to write, I'm holding in my hand, and it's called Girl Chronicles. And what a special story. And I'd love for you, Elizabeth, if you don't mind, just to take a minute just to share uh, just about the book and what are you hoping that the reader takes away from it? Yeah, so we, like you said, we didn't want it to just stop with us. We we felt like because we were kids and could do something about the things we saw, um, that anybody could do it. And so we wanted to write the book to encourage girls specifically to do something about the problems that they see in the world and we you know we didn't want to just inspire girls in Kenya we wanted to inspire girls everywhere and so we felt that um that girls in Kenya girls here have a voice and have strengths and gifts that need to be heard and so kind of the point of the book is to to help girls find their gift and their strength what they're passionate about but also identify the things that they see that aren't right in the world um, and pair those two things together to to make a difference. And so there's a place in the back of the book where girls are given the chance to create their own story of good. And that's where they get to, um, you know, identify those strengths um, and the things that they feel aren't right um, and actually create action steps and plans. And we have, you know, resources and tools for them um, because we want to see girls everywhere creating a, a difference um, and making a change. And so that's kind of the heart behind the Girl Chronicles. And it follows our story of how we went from just a bead kit, wanting to sell jewelry to actually helping girls in Kenya. Um, and our, our hope is that girls see that, that they have the ability to do that too. Our story isn't unique. Um, it's just that we we um, had these opportunities and, and decided to believe in the dreams that we had and um, that we were able to do it. It's not it's not unique. It's for, for every girl and for every boy. Um, Every student that wants to, that sees a problem and has a solution um, can do something about it. I love the way that you guys frame it because it is, you know, what's your, what's your power? You know, what's that thing that you're 
good at because I think a lot of people want to help, but they don't really know where to start or where to begin, or they feel like they don't know if they can do it themselves. And so I, I like that you guys frame it in that way. You shared a story just a little bit ago about uh, you running out of the room <laughs> during your first speaking event. And for a lot of people that would like, I, I would say like scar them for life, say like, I'm done with public speaking forever. I love that your parents uh, let let you have room to fail and continuously challenged you. Uh, but a lot of people would have given up. And so I want to ask, like, have you kept yourself motivated over the over the past few years? Yeah, that's been, that's like the, the, you know, continuing challenges. How do you have motivation when you know, we, you know, we aren't close to the people that we're helping. That's tiring to not be able to, you know, have one-on-one -on -one communication. Um, Africa, especially Kenya, um, it's just in developing countries, communication is just slow. Banking is slow. Shipping is slow. So everything is kind of stacked up against you to feel, um, to feel slow. And so you, for us, it was just, really remembering who we're fighting for and who, why we're doing this in the first place. When we, for example, when we wrote the book, we were told that our story, um, that we needed a different story and that it wasn't good enough um, and that people didn't want to hear that. And so in that moment, we had to believe that our story and our contribution and who we were fighting for mattered. And that um, at the end of the day, when we feel run down and we feel tired, it's remembering the faces of Grace and Precious and the girls that we help that that continues that fight. And there's no longer a question of, you know, how are we going to do this? It's, um, or there's not a question of, you know, are we going to continue doing this? It's how we're going to do it. Um, and so these challenges just provide us with opportunities to look at things differently, um, you know, and because of our obstacles, we're actually able to overcome them in a way and go down different paths that we never would have um, without those obstacles. So you know, we have to, we have to just remember who we're fighting for. And that was, that's been the most important thing for us. Elizabeth, you are firing me up over here. <laughs> I love it that you use the challenges just to further fuel, you know, your mission and to keep you, to keep you focused. I just think it's awesome. Elizabeth, tell us what's your next big dream for Beads, Beads of Good or anything else that you'd like to share? Mm -hmm. Um. So we, now I just turned 18 and so so now that I'm able to enter kind of a bigger legal role, that's really exciting for me. Um, things that I wouldn't have been able to do, you know, last week I can do now. And so um, that's really exciting. Just entering, you know, I'm going to college and for business. And so that's really exciting for me to see how I can further what we're doing. Um, and we are right now, we're trying to build a, a new safe house to take in 15 new girls. So that's one of our, our big dreams right now is finishing that. Um, but I think the biggest, um, like, you know, a theoretical dream right now for me as I've pursued business and have found it to be a really useful tool for helping people. Um, I would love to create more entrepreneurship programs within our work in Kenya so that girls could take out their own micro loans and create their own companies and businesses. And I don't know what that looks like yet, um, but that would be something I'd be interested in doing eventually, um, adding that to our program. And so, yeah, that's like the big dream. <laughs> You've got so many. I love it. I love even what you say. Like we don't, I don't know exactly how that's going to happen yet, but it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, it's going to, it's definitely going to. So um, we've got a couple more questions for you. This one's going out to our middle school and high school students that are listening right now. We wanted to ask, do you have a piece of advice now that you are even, you know, you're a graduate, um, what piece of advice would you want to share with them? I think what's been kind of our, or at least my goal through um, being a student and being a kid is not wasting the time that I have. I think a lot of times we're told like you have to wait till college, after college, or after high school to do something that matters, something that's important. Um, but the truth is that this time is so important for who you are and what you're going to do because right now you're developing your values and your strengths and your skills and what better way to use them um, or yeah, what better way to use them than right now. And so that's been really important for me is like you have an influence right now that it's going to be very different after you graduate high school or college and you know doors will be opened in a different way um and you have more of an influence now than you will when you're older and so you don't you don't want to waste that and I heard uh, my mom share this quote it said little fits where big doesn't and so if you imagine like dropping something in a crack an adult hand isn't going to be able to pick it up but you know an eight-year-old's hand will 
And so the idea that where, where we're placed right now, we have influence. So use that where you are. You don't have to wait. And you have, you have strengths now that the world is actually waiting for you to use. And so my encouragement would be to press into those strengths um, and don't waste that time. That is good. I'm going to have my kiddos, Elizabeth, rewatch and re-listen <laughs> to that, that answer to that question right there. You know, influence is something that we talk a lot about here at LoveWorks, but I, I love what you said. You know, this there's a very, very unique window of opportunity that young people have, and so, so use it. I just love it. So good. Well, all right. So you've already said a lot of great, great stuff, but we are going to give you one more opportunity, Elizabeth, to speak in uh, to just our viewers' dreams. And we call it Last Minute Link, and so this is going to be an opportunity for you to be able to link it all up together and share with us something that's in encouraging about doing your dream. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Set. Carolyn's got her timer and go. Okay. I'm going. Um, so this has been a really challenging time for everybody. Um, and for the work that we've done too, everything's changed. And so now more than ever, you're seeing things that are wrong with the world and you keep keep pursuing those things and keep connecting your strengths to those challenges. Um, it's really important. It's really important right now. We need people who are, are passionate about, you know, pursuing injustice and bringing justice to the things that aren't right in the world. And we see that right now. And so I want to encourage you to, you know, who are you is one of the big things. What are your values and um, your beliefs and your attitudes? What are the things that make you, um, you, um, those are your strengths. And so that's going to, you know, propel you to, to make a difference. And then who do you know? I talked about the people that, um, you know, that influenced me and pushed me. I mentioned LoveWorks. LoveWorks is a huge one. They have tools and resources already there. Um, and then you have your family and your friends who are there to support you. Um, and then the opportunities or the problems that have been presented to you. Um, look for those three things. Um, which, you know, we're in one right now, we're in a big problem right now. So who you are, who you know, and the opportunities around you. I think those are the things that are going to equip you to make a difference. Um, and so I hope that's an encouragement. <laughs> Perfect. That was amazing. So who you are, who you know, what can you do? Um, and figuring out like, what are your values right now? I, I think that's important. What presses on your heart? Um, and then how can you apply your own strengths to it? Elizabeth, you have been such a great example of, of how, um, especially young people can do that. Uh, so thank you for sharing your heart and your wisdom um, with all of us. And so we will, we're gonna give you a quick break. We're gonna ask our viewers out there to drop questions in the uh, in your comment box. And so uh, we're gonna give you a short break. We're gonna talk about our digital resources and then our next upcoming link, Dreamer and Doer. It is gonna be a good one. But first, Carolyn, it's questions are coming in and have come in, we just want to remind you where you can access all things leadership. Yes, there are blogs still out there, and we've got one. Not only that, but a podcast, uh, Link with Love Works, of course. And if you haven't heard about it yet, we have something special that we've created for helping to develop your leadership and your character. It's called At Home Leadership Courses. You can access all of those things at our website at loveworksleadership.org. Carolyn, can you tell us a little bit about At Home Leadership? Yes, we actually just released our ninth lesson this morning. It's actually called Win or Learn. It's actually about failing forward. So very on topic with Elizabeth's uh, interview today. And so uh, we're wrapping up our second block of lessons, which means we're also going to have our first group of students who have earned their first incentive. And so when you finish 10 lessons, uh, you'll also get a sticker pack, a whole LoveWorks theme sticker pack along with that. And so uh, nine of those lessons are available now online. You can go to loveworksleadership.org, work on them at your own pace. You can finish them all today. You can take them slow if you want to. <laughs> I love it. So, all right. So we have Elizabeth back with us. And as we're wrapping up, we've had some questions come in and also too, we'll have a moderator, a staff member from LoveWorks, uh, ask them questions too, if you happen to have them. But uh, Carolyn, let's roll with a tough one. I mean, we've asked Elizabeth some tough questions, but this one here from Sky. Elizabeth, if you're ready for it, what is yeah. your favorite animal? Oh, my favorite animal. Um, I don't know, probably a lion. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't we should have given more notes on that one. For just a, couple, <laughs> just a second. 
<laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> That's funny. Well, so next question. This one's from David. He asks, what's next for you now that you've graduated high school? Um, so I'm going to UCO for international business um, starting in the fall. And so I'm hoping that that kind of propels what I'm already doing um, as far as, you know, the work I want to do in pursuing business as a tool for change. And so that, that's probably the, the biggest next step for me. Cool. Love it. And you've already touched on this, uh, Elizabeth. And so not to be redundant here, but, uh, you know, Kelly wanted to hear about, you know, what's your next big dream, you know, for, you know, beads of good, or is there anything you want to maybe touch on in regard to Girl Chronicles? Yeah. So one of the things that has been um, our heart for a long time since we, you know, published the book is creating um, kind of a program for um, students in, in grade school to use our book as um, a tool. And so we wanted teachers to be mentors and then kind of take them through a study of the book and so that they can think about um, hard things in a safe environment where they're challenged to take risks and be creative, um, not just for themselves, but for other people. And so that's kind of one of the big dreams and ideas that we have that we haven't gotten to um, push in too much. Uh, and so our hope is to continue that and and to see, you know, students be mentoring girls um, so that they can, you know, actually pursue the things that they see that aren't right in the world and, and pair them with their strengths. So that's our hope. Thank you for sharing that hope with us. Well, Elizabeth, as I mentioned earlier, not only a fellow dreamer, a doer, you have been a friend for a long time at LoveWorks. Thank you so much for joining us today on linking up with us. We know we're better for it, and we know that those are listening to this are better for it as well. Yeah, thank you so much. This is so fun. <laughs> thank you. Well, next week, everyone, we are bringing in another special friend of LoveWorks. Yes, we have lots of friends, uh, and his name is Brent Wheelbarger. Uh, Brent is also the co-founder of uh, a business called Veribus VR Labs. It's a tech startup that's developing virtual reality therapy tools for children with cerebral palsy. Uh, Brent's also involved in a collaboration with Trifecta Communications, which he founded, and LoveWorks Leadership, helping middle school start, in, start a business that is called Wristworld. But more about that next week. And next week's going to be a double feature because we're bringing in a new friend. Uh, she's from Wisconsin. Her name is Morgan. And through her virtual lemonade stand, she's already raised a little over 40 thousand dollars. So just a reminder uh, to access uh, not only Link with LoveWorks, but our other digital resources, visit our website at loveworksleadership.org. And remember, real leaders don't blend in, they stand out. Dream big. And do your dream. <laughs>